Hilarious Hampers is a series of patterns that's appearing in Country Knitting of Maine News and Views magazine. It will eventually become a book. They are quite easy. Hampers for clothing and other items, such as recycled bags, with characters. In order to achieve these character looks, we need to use a few unusual techniques. So the video series is going to help you achieve these looks. Let's talk about the lion's teeth. First his fangs, canine teeth, and then the little teeth. These are pieces of Velcro, white of course, trimmed. For this particular one, I left about a half an inch to underlap and that would be, you'd always want to leave about that much. Now your length of fang will vary with the size of the lion's face. This is a mid-gauge version and the lion's head itself is around 11 inches across and so I decided on this 7 8 inch fang length. The nice thing about doing it on Velcro, and this is the rough side, not the soft side, is that you can stick it inside the mouth like this, try out several positions, and then of course you'll want to sew through it to secure them, but you get to readjust it till you're pleased with the look that you're getting. I'm finding that angling inwards towards the center of the mouth a little bit seems to look more lion-like than totally vertically. Now let's make the little teeth that are in between. I'm going to start on the opposite side, the outside of the mouth, pulling a loop through an interior stitch outside the fang and make my first loop of an actual stitch all the way across the fang just to stabilize. Between every chain stitch that works into the lion's lip, we'll do a chain stitch that doesn't attach to anything except itself. I'm using four thin strands of a hard twist dress yarn. Um, do it, use anything that suits the weight, but I thought the faint shininess of this would be better than the fuzzier yarns that I have. Okay, next lip stitch over. Work one chain stitch, make sure these aren't too tight. And a chain stitch that only attaches to the white yarn. And work across. You do not have to hit every lip stitch. Space it as seems appropriate to you. And of course, if you don't like what you got, you can release this so easily. So what we're wanting is these stitches to all be about the same size. But since they're attaching to what's basically worm trim, we may skip a worm trim stitch every now and then while attaching. Now, do I have room? I think I will put one more anchored to the lip on the inside of the fang. And then to secure the whole thing, I'll do the same as we did on the leading edge. Keep my yarn to the inside of the mouth. Now I'll snip the yarn and secure the yarn tail. And so we have the image of a tooth-like row of little teeth up here as a real lion has. Now we'll work on the lower lip. As you join me, I've already anchored on the outside, I mean the side of the mouth, outside of the tooth. I'm going to stitch Cross the fang, pull up a loop, 
that one tried to get too tight, so it's important that I loosen it a little bit. This is the exact same process as we just did. I just want you to get to see it again so you'll feel confident making your own face. Chain stitch, chain stitch, chain stitch into the fabric and not into the fabric. I am not attempting to count the number of real teeth that a lion has and make that many stitches. I think it's an adequate illusion to just make a row of tiny tooth appearing things. There's no reason that you can't, if you happen to know that. Wikipedia, here we come. Some of these will seem a little tight to work into, and if you take it slow, it'll be fine. The exact thickness of yarn that you want to use for this is going to vary with the gauge of project you have selected. I aimed for a thickness of total thickness of this white yarn similar to the thickness of my main lion yarn and I think that's what is going to be most effective in each case. And now I can snip the yarn tail, pull it through, And anchor it somewhere back here. I'm going to show you a trick for anchoring a contrasting yarn where this is going to be a high wear area because clothes are going to go in and out, dirty clothes, or whatever you use this for. So I'm going to split a stitch half inch to three quarters of an inch away, pull through two of my four strands. If using a single yarn, you could still separate the plies and do this. I've only got the back of this stitch, so my white is not showing through here. This is not the pretty kind of weaving in that you'd want for a heritage type sweater, but it's very practical. Without drawing in the fabric, I'm going to now knot the two pairs of yarn strands together. And now when I trim it off, it should be secure for the life of this pouch and it should not show.